We knew all along there was two phases to this campaign. We were going to have to win the vote and then defend the ban in court. The Texas Oil and Gas Association is asking the Denton County Court to end the ban before it can take effect December 2nd, calling it unconstitutional for preempting state law. Well, the price of a gallon of gasoline continues to fall to the point where soon Americans will be able to bathe in it, wash their clothes in it, where it will be served as a soft drink to those daring enough, and we will be able to stick our oil-covered tongues at the rest of the world and tell them, take their barrels and roll them into the sea. We won't care, and then laugh at our independence. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so perhaps just a little tad overboard. But thanks to some new technologies, America has reached a new level of independence on energy. How long will it last? Welcome to Midpoint, the expert on such energy matters and chief executive officer of Rocky Mountain Resources, Chad Brownstein, joins us today. Chad, thanks so much for being here. Chad, we look at fracking here. So much of what we have heard about the hydraulic fracking that's going on, that is what is helping to set us on an energy independence route at this point. But the big question I keep hearing from people is, how long can this last? We're all giddy at the moment as if it's manna from heaven, but is this truly the release that we have been looking for from OPEC and having to export or rather import all of our oil? It, it truly is. The, the reality is, is this country with an energy plan becomes energy independent in, within the next 25 years. We have 10% of the world's oil production. If we really let loose, we could have a more meaningful number than that. But what it comes down to is Washington, and, and specifically the administration needs to accept the Keystone Pipeline as the key to job growth in this country. We can unlock all the resources in this country as long as the administration proves to continue to help the energy industry, and we have a great chance to do that as long as people get their heads straight. There's always a discourse though, about the Keystone Pipeline. Would you answer, if you can, please? Many people say that, yes, it'll bring jobs, but they will not be permanent jobs in many ways, and also a lot of this oil that we are using through the Keystone Pipeline is not actually going to benefit Americans. What's the truth? The truth is we create uh, maybe 5 million jobs. I don't know. Last time I checked, that was a pretty good number. Those are high-paying long-term jobs because what it'll do is it attracts more drilling in the United States. You have better infrastructure, you have better resource opportunities, you have more drilling. Right now, there's 1,900 rigs in the field. Why shouldn't there be 3,000 rigs in the field? We have an opportunity to become natural gas dependent. That's a great scenario for the environmentalists. You want to pay a dollar at the pump consistently, you want to pay three dollars at the pump. We have a great chance with Keystone to create as many jobs as has been created in the entire administration with just accepting the fourth phase. We're not talking about recreating the wheel here. There's already been three phases and it's done. Let's get that done. Let's get jobs created, more drilling, better infrastructure in this country will be put to work. We'll be off of the OPEC scenario where we're consistently worried about what they're doing. Oh Why God. are we worried about what's happening with them? I only got yeah. about 90 seconds left here. I got about 90 seconds left, so let me ask you this with regard to the hydraulic fracturing once again. How would you answer those who say that environmentally it's a bad idea? Simply put, we should be very careful about it, and it is not the best way to go for long term. Long term, hydraulic fracturing is the best way to go. We've been doing some form of it since 1950, so this is nothing new. The environmentalists need to understand that there's never been a major issue domestically in the United States onshore. So the oil industry has done a very good job at casing and protecting the aquifers and the infrastructure related to the U.S. We have to keep drilling. It's a safe process. We have to make sure that we maintain the standards that protect our citizens. But believe me, this has been something that's been happening this year in this country for 75 years. We're just getting really good at it now. The more efficient we are, the better it's going to be, the more job creation that we have. It's, a, it's an absolute win for the country. It's a win for the environmentalists because we'll pay more and more attention to how we're procuring the resource. And ultimately, it will be the engine that drives this country for the next half, maybe 100 years. 15 seconds. Will the Republican Congress be the key to moving ahead on everything? And you believe that everything will be done in short order? Well, look, the country spoke. That red map showed that whatever the Democrats were doing isn't working. We need to put people to work. We need high paying jobs. Energy's the safe, efficient way to do it. Let's keep the jobs here, and that's what I hope the administration's here. And keep OPEC on its heels, which would not be a bad idea at all. Chad Brownstein, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure.
All right, breaking back as we spin to a national discussion about sexual child abuse. What some see as a troubling attitude toward a new memoir. And at 51 minutes after the hour, venture with us to Outland and say thank you to a small pet rodent for all that is right with the world. We will, and so will you. Stay tuned. This is Midpoint.